my new neighbor is a Karen. She's the most self-centered, toxic old lady I've ever had to deal with, and the only thing I have on my mind is revenge, and I'm going to get it because she's interfering with my emotions. My stress levels are through the roof, and I can't work. I work from home as a musician, and she's making my life a nightmare, so here it comes, my revenge. Hey guys, so I need your help and judgment on this situation. I'm a 29-year-old female musician. I've been living in this house for about six years now. I record music in my home studio for a living. Always during the day, never at night. This way, I thought I was being considerate to my neighbors. Last month, an old lady, I'm going to refer to her as Karen because it seems pretty fitting, moved into the next door house. I was initially excited about having somebody new in the neighborhood and was looking forward to getting to know her. I even baked up my fresh cookies, went over to say hello, and that's when everything went south. Before I could even finish my welcome to the neighborhood speech, Karen cuts me off. She looked visibly upset and said, I've been hearing your music all day and it's driving me crazy. You need to stop playing so loudly. Well, I was taken aback and quickly explained that I'm a professional musician. Recording during the day is just my job. And that I've always made sure not to record at night so as not to disturb anyone and to not break any city ordinances. Karen scoffed and said, Well, it's disturbing me and I don't care about your job or an ordinance. You need to find a new place to record or stop altogether and get a real job. Well, I tried to reason with her, suggesting we could find a compromise. Maybe talk about soundproofing or, I don't know, specific hours that I could keep the noise down. But she was not having it. She just walked away, mumbling something about, quote, rude and inconsiderate neighbors these days. I was left standing there, cookies in hand, feeling like I had just been slapped in the face. I've continued to record during the day as I always have, but I can feel the tension building. Karen shoots me a dirty look whenever we cross paths and made passive-aggressive comments to her other neighbors that, quote, that noisy musician next door. No one ever has complained about my recording schedule, and I'm actually unsure if I'm really the one in the wrong here. I love my job, and I've worked hard to be mindful of my neighbors, but now I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a neighbor drama, and I'm going to tell you right now, update number one is an absolute doozy. You're not going to believe the sort of revenge that the old lady is trying to get on OP. If you guys are new to Mr. Redito's revenge channel, make sure you subscribe for daily revenge stories. And let's jump into update number one. Hey guys, quickly, I want to thank you for your comments and support. I'm currently looking into soundproofing solutions to keep the peace, even though it's a big investment. Stay tuned for an update. And here's the update. Hey guys, I'm back like I said I'd be, and yes, this one's crazy. This situation with Karen, my neighbor, who's been making my life miserable over my daytime music recordings, escalated in a way I never anticipated. If you've been following my previous post, you know I went through the effort of soundproofing my studio room and complying with every rule to appease the Karen. Well... She even called the cops on me multiple times, but they always left, knowing they couldn't do anything because I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Then, something unimaginable happened. One morning, I woke up to discover two of my truck tires have been absolutely slashed to pieces. I was in shock, immediately suspecting foul play, obviously. So, on a hunch, I went to check my ring camera footage. Thank goodness for the ring camera. And what I saw left me stunned. Karen, caught right there on camera red-handed in the middle of the night, slicing my tires with a butcher knife. I could not believe my eyes. 
I immediately called the police, who promptly came over to view the evidence. They arrested Karen, and the next day she was released from jail on some sort of bond. But the drama did not end there. Karen comes by my house, looking oddly remorseful. She apologized profusely and handed me cash to cover the cost of the tires, desperately trying to avoid a lawsuit. I did accept her apology and the money. Still in a bit of shock over the whole situation, I've never had a neighbor like this. But as she was leaving, Karen turned to me with a cold look in her eyes and said, and I quote, If you turn down your recordings, I won't have to go crazy mode again. <laughs> I was left there standing, cash in hand, feeling a mixture of disbelief, anger, and well, fear. The threat was clear, crystal clear, and her words were sending chills down my spine. This was not just a neighborly disagreement anymore, it had turned into something dangerous. The apology in cash felt like a bribe to silence me, not a genuine attempt to make amends. I'm now living in absolute fear of what Karen might do next. I feel like I can't even enjoy my own home, knowing that she's next door waiting for an opportunity to strike. So, everybody here, I want to ask you, where do we stand? Am I the a-hole for continuing to record music during the day, even after all this happened? What should I do next? Update number two. Hey guys, it's been four months since my last update, and I wish I could say things have gotten better with my neighbor Karen, but they've gone from bad to <laughs> nightmarish. I feel like I'm trapped in a never-ending cycle of retaliation, and I'm starting to lose myself in it. Karen has not let up. Not only have I caught her throwing her trash bags into my bin, doubling my trash load, but she started leaving littered cigarette butts all along our shared fence, and the worst part, my small dog got into them one day and started throwing up everywhere. I rushed him to the vet, fearing that he was poisoned. He had to have his stomach flushed, and thank goodness he was okay afterward, but the vet bill was ridiculous, and I was left seething with anger. I knew it was Karen cigarette butts. She smokes right there in her backyard all day long, and the butts were only along the side of the fence that we share. It felt like it was calculated, spiteful, and absolutely horrible. That night, I don't know, something in me. It just snapped. In a moment of blind anger and desperation, I, well, decided to seek a bit of revenge. I grabbed rubbing alcohol and a lighter and set fire to Karen's mini-shed in the backyard where she stored all her planting materials. I thought I was being clever, that it would give her a taste of her own medicine, but I was so wrong. Ugh, one of the neighbors witnessed the crime and reported it to the police. I was arrested, my mugshot was taken, and I felt a wave of guilt and shame wash over me. You guys know those little newspapers that shows everyone that was arrested that night? Well, I was in that newspaper for the first time in my life. I was released on bond, but now I have a court date looming, and my reputation in the neighborhood has been shattered. It's no longer innocent me and the old lady who hates my music. I can't believe I stooped to Karen's level. I've been dealing with her attempts to make my life hell for so long that I literally lost sight of who I was and what I believed in. I've been recording music less and less, consumed by the stress and this never-ending feud. I've come to the terrifying realization that a restraining order won't be enough. That there's no winning against Karen, and I'm becoming just like her. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. I'll be honest with you, I did not see that update coming from OP. Oof, didn't think she had it in her. Anyways, there's one final update before we hop into the comment section, so here it is. Update number three. I'm back with yet another final chapter of this saga that's consumed my life for almost a year. 
this ending is both a relief and a shock, and it's left me in a place of reflection, happiness, and inexplicable guilt. The trial was an emotional whirlwind. Every time I looked over at Karen, her face was etched with hostility. I felt a knot of anxiety in my stomach. The proceedings were as tense and fraught as our entire relationship had been. My lawyer, though, was confident, but I could not shake the fear that somehow Karen would manage to turn things against me. Then, as we were leaving the courtroom after a particularly exhausting day, something extraordinary happened. Karen, still full of fury, was walking ahead of me when she suddenly stumbled, clutching at her chest. Panic and confusion filled the hallway as people rushed to her aid, calling for medical assistance it was a heart attack, a severe one. I watched, paralyzed, as paramedics arrived and worked on her. The anger in her eyes replaced with fear and pain. They rushed her to the hospital, but it was too late. Karen was gone. The charges against me were subsequently dropped and the case was closed, but the end was far from triumphant. Despite all the anger, frustration, and hurt that Karen had cost me, I could not help but feel responsible for her death in some way. Had our feud or constant clashing and the stress of the trial led to her heart attack? Was there something I could have done differently? A way to find common ground, these questions haunted me, and in the following weeks, new neighbors moved in next door, and they turned out to be incredibly kind and understanding of the music. The peaceful recording sessions I had once cherished finally returned, and my music began to flow freely once again, but as I sat in my studio, lost in my melodies and harmonies that had always been my escape, I could not shake the guilt and the lingering question. Why had Karen been so hostile? What had driven her to such extremes against me? Could I have handled things differently? Though life has returned to normal and I'm finally happy again, a part of me will always be shadowed by the memory of Karen and our bitter feud. I'll never know her true motives and I'll never shake the feeling that I played a part in her tragic ending. Overall, I've learned about empathy, the complexity of human relationships, and the importance of not losing your anger and revenge. I'm left with a newfound peace and haunting guilt that'll linger as a bittersweet melody in the symphony of my life. Edit. Guys, thank you for walking this challenging road with me. Your support in the comment sections and even your advice and understanding have meant so much to me. This chapter is closed. And yes, I still feel guilty about what happened, but you know what they say. It is what it is. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. We're going to jump into some of the comments, and they do vary with opinion, so let me know in the comment section down below which one of these original post comments you agree with the most. We'll read these comments and then jump into Mr. Reddito's opinion. Comment number one. Music Lover, 1985. Wow, what a story. I honestly can't blame the musician for getting frustrated with Karen. I mean, that lady was clearly out of line from the start. She was doing nothing wrong, didn't break any city ordinances, did not record at night. Nothing wrong. It is unfortunate how things ended, though. OP is not the a-hole here. She was just trying to do her job. Comments? Number two. Well, I have to uh, disagree with some of you. Karen's behavior, yes, it was extreme, but setting fire to the shed was a massive overstep. OP should have sought legal remedies instead of taking the law into her own hands. Karen is the a-hole, but OP's actions make her one too. Everyone sucks here. Comments. Number three. While Karen's actions were incredibly petty and malicious, OP's retaliation with the shed fire was a criminal act. We can't ignore that just because OP was in the right to start. This puts OP squarely in the a-hole category for me. It's sad to see how this feud escalated, though. Comment number four. This story is a tragic example of misunderstandings and lack of communication. 
I feel like Karen might have her reasons, even though her actions were wrong. OP did not handle the situation perfectly either, though. This is a situation where nobody wins. But I can't label either one of these sole people the a-hole, because there's faults on both sides. So it's very rare that I agree with an everyone sucks here, because a lot of the times, it's not possible that everyone can suck. But this story, I agree. I agree with comment number two. Let me reread comment number two so you guys know what I'm talking about. I have to disagree with some of you. Karen's behavior was extreme, yes, but setting fire to the shed was a massive overstep. OP should have sought legal remedies instead of taking the law into her own hands. Yeah, Karen is the a-hole, obviously, but OP's actions make her one too. Everyone sucks here, and guys, I have to agree, OP lost her cool, went over to the neighbor's house, and literally set a shed on fire. I mean, you don't know if an animal could have been in there, maybe even a person that was stuck inside of it. She should have gone the legal route, and yeah, she might have been just lost her cool when she realized that the neighbor basically poisoned her dog. But still, setting fire to someone's shed is not the answer. So in my opinion, comment number two is the best way. Everyone sucks here. But if you don't agree with me, let me know which of the four comments you agree with the most. Drop it in our comment section. I'll discuss with you guys down below. Make sure you subscribe to the new channel, Mr. Redito's Revenge. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow because we got some revenge stories to cover. But remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.